Good afternoon. I want to first introduce my wife, Sharon Patman. Please stand. And let me start off by saying that why run for mayor was a question that's always asked of me. Why run? And I ran because there is a decade of decline going on in this city. It's been going on for a long time. And this administration and the city council president have been at the helm for that decade. During that decade, we've lost hundreds of jobs. During that decade, 20,000 students have left the Cleveland public school system. During that decade, our neighborhoods have become ground zero for foreclosure. Those are the things that are going on in this city. Well positioned, well positioned for what? There's only one city that's doing worse than this city when it comes to population, and that's New Orleans, and I haven't seen a tsunami or Katrina or anything else blow through Cleveland. So the idea that we are well positioned, we need to think about it. We must end the nightmare. The nightmare of graduating almost only half of our students. The nightmare of losing Fortune 500 companies. The nightmare of rhetoric that basically says, it is what it is. It's not. It is what we make it. It is what the citizens of this great city make it. Because this is a great city. Yes, it has poor leadership. Nothing with poor leadership can succeed. Not a ship, not a city, not a country. This is a great city. Medical Mecca, museums, ball teams, a great city. Poor leadership. Yes, we should imitate other cities. I make no apology for that. Philadelphia has started a welcoming center that's growing its population and has leveled and moving forward. Pittsburgh has reinvented itself and has an unemployment rate that's the envy of most of the country. This is a great city. It needs great leadership. So I say to you that on November 3rd, we can end the decade of decline. We can end the uh, bad dream that we're all going through. When I get up in the morning and open the plain dealer, and I see on one page robbery of the uh, poker game on the one side of town, our most talented children being robbed on the streets of Glenville can't walk down the street uh, with an iPod because of a poor s a decision on where to locate them. Yes, yeah, a great city, poor leadership. I say enough is enough. I say that if the, the superintendent can't do the job, he should find another job. I say if the mayor can't do the job, find another job. Because Cleveland is much too important for us to mince words today. It's much too important for us to gloss over what's going on. Let's get back to the rhetoric of 2005. I remember, maybe you don't, there was somebody who stood and said, Expect great things. I'm still waiting. Somebody who said, we're going to make it a city of choice. They're choosing. We're losing 6,000 people a year. Somebody who said, make our schools the schools of choice. We're losing students everywhere. But that's not to say that Cleveland can't do better. With good leadership, sound budgeting, and I said sound budgeting, not a budget that actually creates a hole so big that you, cannot drive, you can drive a truck through it. In 2010, every prediction that I'm going to make will come true, whether Frank Jackson is the mayor or Bill Patman is the mayor, that somebody has to tighten down and figure out how to run this city and make sense of what is going on budgetarily. So I ask for your support, because I want to be the one who helps in the bad dream that we're all going through. Because when I wake up in the morning on East Boulevard, one of the best streets in Cleveland, right across from the Essendon Gardens, I look out of my side window and find a vacant and vandalized house that was unheard of on that street for the length of time it's been in existence. So we can either turn the corner or keep going in the same direction. It's up to you. I ask you to be my partner. I ask you to help me to help our city. Thank you.
We'll now hear the rebuttals. Mayor Jackson, I believe you have two minutes remaining. Well, uh, I don't know how bad the dream is. If you look at uh, Cleveland, you compare us to other urban centers, um, I don't think we're that bad off. I really don't. Now, do we have problems? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Will we work on those problems? Yes, we will. Will we overcome those problems? Yes, we will. Will we take advantage of the challenging times we're in to position Cleveland and to be successful for the future? Yes, we will. But I'm happy to work with the council president. I've been in public uh, office for 20 years, and I believe the council president about 10 or 12. Well, uh, Mr. Padman says he was a uh, councilman for 12 years, and he was chairman of finance and part of the leadership. Well, then if it's a bad dream, he helped create it. <laughs> and I will tell you that uh, when you, you should expect great things. You should expect great things. And you know what? There's no promise that I have made, and you can just check my 2005 campaign. Just check it. There's no promise that I made that I have not either fulfilled or worked on and have made substantial progress on. Because I believe that what you say you should do, you should do. And that there is no distinction between a campaign and governance. Some of us like the game. Some of us like the game. And I do the work. Thank you. Yeah, come on up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Jackson. Mr. Patman, you have three minutes remaining. Thank you. I like the word, the game. It isn't a game. It's the lives of each and every one of you. It's no game. You make policy that either hurts or helps people. You can either paint the police cars all black, you can't hardly see them, and criminals think there are no police cars on the street like this administration did, and call it a game. Or you can make them all black and white like they do in New York and create an increased visibility. No game. And yes, I was in leadership. And yes, I created $21 million for neighborhoods in Cleveland as a finance chair. I am awfully proud of what I did in Cleveland City Council. And I wasn't speaking to Marty Sweeney. I was speaking to Frank Jackson, who was the council president during the period of time that I was speaking to this decade from 2001. So make no mistake, this is a debate between Frank Jackson and myself. Yeah. Now, the idea that we are well positioned keeps being pushed forward. Well positioned is Pittsburgh. 7% unemployment reinvented itself, and we need to do the same thing here. Well positioned is Chicago with six miles of developed lakefront. That's well positioned, a center of the region. Well positioned. The mayor of the city of Cleveland should lead the discussions. As far as having a summit, I, summit, summit, okay. But we spend a half billion dollars in our public utilities department, and we should drive the green process. We should be the laboratory for the state of Ohio for green jobs, green energy, right here. So this is no game. It is the business of people's lives. Yes, we are some imperfect people working in an imperfect world, looking for perfect solutions. I, for one, believe the founders of this country did the same thing, and that's what I profess to do as a politician, and you can count on me to do that every day. And we hear about quiet work. A duck goes across the pond. You don't see his feet, and he moves. But what if the duck is not moving? Think about it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Patman. Um, we now have about roughly eight or nine minutes for um, some give and take, and I, I want to ask you both to uh, put your microphones on your lapels uh, while I sort of figure out where we're going to start here. There's a, quite a lot of ground we could cover. 